Good morning, everyone. Um, as my mom always starts it, she says, God is good. And God he, is good. He's so good. I'm Addison. I'm Steve. We're married. And so what we're doing today, it'll be fun. And uh, we've just been talking about the faithfulness of God and how good he is. So we're going to get right into it, but I'm going to pray. God, thank you that we get to spend this time together. And any time that the word is spoken, uh, one scripture can just change our lives because it's words from you, Lord. And we just thank you that we open up our heart to receive everything that you have for us. And we thank you, God, that we stand firm in our faith. And we thank you that you are just helping us to um, go from glory to glory in Jesus' name. And that today is a wonderful day. And that, that everybody today senses how much you love them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Um, when we were asked to do this today, um, I got on our, or on my heart to talk about we the faithfulness. Our heart. Yeah, <laughs> our heart. To talk about the faithfulness of God, and it's Easter week, so Easter is coming up, and since that's the message, I thought, let's go back to the beginning, to the father of our faith, Abraham, and find out where all this covenant started. And there's some good stuff here. So let's go to Genesis 21. Genesis 21. And there's the, the whole thing here is the parallels between what, like it's, you know, it's God's a, go, a covenant keeping God. And a covenant is only as strong as the two people who make that agreement. If one person is weak in the covenant, then then the covenant just it doesn't it's pointless. The covenant is as strong as the person who makes the covenant. So this is Abraham, the father of our faith, making a covenant with God. So it's Abraham's strong faith and God's unbreakable faith combined. That's good. So in Genesis twenty one, it said that Sarah conceived and bore Abraham, a son in his old age, at the set time which God had spoken to him. So there was a set time that God gave Abraham a son. There's a set time that God sent Jesus onto the earth. So there's that. And then I'm just going to read all of Abraham, or all of Abraham 22, all of Genesis 22. <clears throat> Most of it. Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. Then he said, take now your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering. Where are you reading from? Abra uh, from Abraham. <laughs> Genesis, Genesis 22. Genesis 22, 1? Gen starting at Genesis, Genesis 22, 1. Okay. Now I'm on 2. Okay. And offer him there as a burnt offering on the mountains of which I tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and he split the wood for the burnt offering, and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey, and the lad and I will go yonder and worship, and we will come back to you. So Abraham took the wood and the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son, and he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and the two of them went together. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, My father, and he said, Here I am, my son. And he said, Look, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. Then they came to the place of which God had told him. And Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order. And he bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here I am. And he said, do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, 
since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and there behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called on the name of the Lord, or called the name of the place the Lord will provide, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. Then Abraham, then the then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and not withheld your son, your only son, blessing I will bless you, and multiplying I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is on the seashore. And your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. In your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. So Abraham returned to his young men, returned to his young men, and they rose and they went together to Beersheba, and Abraham dwelt at Beersheba. Okay. Thank you for being patient. Now, let's unravel it. God gave Abraham a son in the appointed time. In like the time that in the fullness of the times, God sent Jesus. Mm-hmm. It was his only son. It was an impossible situation for Abraham to have a son. In the same way, it was impossible for God to have a son on earth. But they, through the prophets, things were spoken into existence, and the word became flesh. So that's how God got, the, got his son to the earth, through, through the word that was spoken. So he came to earth. Then God said to Abraham, saddle up a donkey and, and, and then take him to, take this, your son, sacrifice him you know, on, on the altar. So then, because God's a covenant-keeping God, God put Jesus on a donkey, and he rode him all the way up to be sacrificed on Palm Sunday. That's why God put him on his donkey. Abraham had his donkey that, um, that, that he owned. God had a donkey that nobody had ever ridden on. It was God's donkey that he put his son on and brought him up in the same way. In the same way that God, that Abraham split the wood and had Isaac carry that wood up to the place where he was to be sacrificed. God split the wood, the tree, and had Jesus carry that cross all the way up to be to be uh, sacrificed. Yeah. Um, in the same way that a ram was caught by its horns in in the bush, G- the the horns in the Bible they represent authority. Jesus was caught in our, he stooped down to us and they put a thorn, a crown of thorns on him to represent that same authority. So just like that ram, the horns represent authority, it was stuck in the thicket. That was the, the, the symbolism. They put a thorn, a crown of thorns on Jesus' head. So God's a completely covenant-keeping God. And, you know, when when we do something in faith, like Abraham, the father of our faith, he stepped out and he was willing to, you know, even sacrifice his own son to God. He said, that's as if you did give your son. And then God literally had to keep up, upkeep his side of the covenant by giving his son and making him a sacrifice for us. Yeah. So it's just amazing. You know, the Bible talks about how these things in the Old Testament they're types and shadows of the things to come. Mm-hmm. These, you know, Abraham giving his son on the altar is a type of God giving his son t- to us as well. So um, I love how in, in Genesis, you know, Abraham was like, hey, God will provide. Yeah. And that's just such a great statement. When you are stepping out in faith, it's like, I'm willing to give everything I'm willing to do anything, but I know God will provide. And God, because he's so much higher than us, when he up keeps his end of the covenant, it's always more and always greater than our, our side. So Abraham did have to step out in faith and do works. He actually had to go through it as if he was gonna give up his son and like 
actually, you know, he has the, uh, he had the, the blade ready to, you know, to, uh, to sacrifice his son, and God fulfilled it, you know, because it said it was, it, the Bible says that that faith was reckoned to Abraham as righteousness. That's good. You inspired me, and I was trying to find something that was about Abraham's blessings and how, um, I don't know if I can, if it's in this one or in the tongues book, so that's why, it's like visually, if I see Mm -hmm. it, I can know that it's in there, Mm -hmm. but it talks about like three, see, I didn't prepare this, because then he just inspired me to have it, it just popped up in my heart, but. It'll be really well, the great blessing for the next of Abraham time. does come on <laughs> us. Like all these blessings, yeah, that God said to Abraham, those blessings actually come on us. The the curse, Jesus did away with that when he, you know, somebody had to somebody had to die. The Bible says, without uh, without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. But through the shedding of Jesus' perfect blood, there's complete elimination of sin because. You know, the Bible says we've been crucified with Christ, and that's how we live. So that the the blessing of Abraham actually comes on us. Found it, um, which is amazing. So it, it says um, these are principles of Abraham's prosperity, mm-hmm. and it's because he listened to and obeyed God, Genesis 12, 1 through 4. He honored God who p- prospered him, Genesis 12, 7. He was generous and avoided strife. That's a big deal. Yeah. Genesis 13, 5 through 9. And he was compassionate toward others. Um, Genesis 18, 24 and 23. If you want, this is about finances because it's from the finance book. But if you want God to be involved in your finances and prosper you, you must um, honor these basic principles. I just thought that was really good. Yeah. Anytime that the Bible talks about, the Bible says that faith pleases God. And so if the Bible calls Abraham the father of our faith, then we need to dig deep into in, studying yeah. the father of our faith. And, w- like, line by line, what did he do? Like, every single thing. Mm-hmm. If he, you know, if he was willing to to walk it out, whatever God said, then I need to be willing to walk out exactly what God says. Yeah. If in the middle of walking it out, what did he say? He said, hey. God is going to provide. Yeah. He knew God would provide. And the Bible even says that Abraham knew that God was able to raise um, his son, from Isaac, from the dead. Um, that's when he was walking out of his faith. And God actually did raise Jesus from the dead. So it was Abraham's faith knowing that God could raise his son from the dead, that God was, you know, activated that faith and raised Jesus from the dead. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, <laughs> it is good. And then we were um, just talking about how God is with us and how he's um, He's just an ever-present help and also just whatever you're going through, um, speak out God's word because it, it can just, one word can change us. My mom has always said that. I mean, that's just what it is, is that, if you hear one scripture and you get revelation, nobody can take that revelation from you. And then when you get that revelation, share it with other people. And it's just, it's so good. So I just, this um, scripture, Isaiah 41, 10, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. And I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And um, I mean, there's just, it's, I love I love Google because you can just look up any, you can look up um yeah types of, like I just put God being with us scriptures, and then you get like a list. So whatever you're, you're going through today, put that in, and don't don't just go silently throughout your day, just like letting your mind be a jungle gym, but really get some scriptures and um, stand on it, even just one scripture, and just say it over yourself all day long, and build up yourself in faith. Yeah. I was talking to somebody today about... Um, you know, those brooding thoughts, you know? And we are born of incorruptible seed. We have the life of God living in us. So our source, the thing that's in us, we we go from glory to glory, from life to life. We draw from the things that are in us. We draw from that life and we and we go from glory to glory. 
um, anything that's like a negative thought or anything like that, you're actually pulling something from the outside that's not even part of us. You're pulling that from outside and putting it into yourself. Mm-hmm. And uh, it used to be, you know, before we were born again, that we were, you know, born in sin. And so the life of sin, the source of sin was just coming out of us. And so we could just um, think negative thoughts and it wouldn't bother us. We could, you know, just do bad things and it wasn't bothering us because we had a source from within from death to death. We were able to, you know, draw from that and just think negative thoughts or think of anything bad and it could, we were just pulling from that source. Now we actually have to go from the outside, take something rotten and bring it in to to our insides, to our, to our mind. And, you know, that's why, like, when you when you do that, it just it just torments you because that's not who you are. You yeah. you're not supposed to bring death in and bring it into a, a mind the mind of Christ. Yeah. Because it just it's like it's extra bad because we're born again to to sit around and like and just let yourself get depressed because you have the mind of Christ. Don't take something from the outside, you know, some death and put it into the mind of Christ. Think the thoughts of God. Agree with yeah. the the things that that do that are that are pure that are good, mm-hmm. and uh, and you'll you'll be renewed. Um, yeah, the uh, um, you know you have so many so many people are like I don't hear clearly the voice of God, and it's like he does like the Bible says Jesus said my sheep know my voice the voice of a stranger they won't follow. But if you have, if we had five, you know, speakers playing different things on right now, and then there was like a jackhammer going over there, we would, we'd hear all this going on at the same time. And if somebody was whispering, we couldn't hear them. But even though we know that they're, they're talking to us and they're whispering, it would be as if we can't hear them anyway. So we can see them. We know they're whispering, but we just, we say, I can't hear the voice of the of the one who's whispering over there. What we could do is turn down this speaker, turn down this speaker, turn down this speaker, and listen, what is that clanging going on? Not to listen to it, but to figure out what's going on. Stop the clanging from going on, and then listen to who's ever talking. And a lot of times when people say, I can't hear the voice of God, it's not that we can't hear the voice of God, it's that we just have to turn down the volume of the of the things that are that are white louder, noise. yeah, the white noise, and then find out what that clanging is, yeah. deal with that, and then get and then focus in on the, the voice of the Holy yeah. Spirit. That's really good. And at Philippians 4, um, let's start with, man, it's all just so good. Let's start with 4, Philippians 4, 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentle spirit be known to all people. The... Um, Sorry, I switched to going up there. Uh, the Lord, the Lord is near. Do not be anxious for anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. So make a prayer list, and the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, what, what, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, what, whatever is of good repute, if there is any excellence. And if anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. The things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things. So that's what we're talking about, too. It's like we're practicing these things. It's not like, like I've been working with Trent on reading, spelling, and math. And it's really interesting to see just like human nature because he was kind of giggling and like he's on, he's on the spot learning, you know. I'm like, I know all those feelings. That was me. It's like. You feel like when you're learning how to read, you should be able to know how to read already. And it's like, you should, it's like, <laughs> I, oh, I, you, you know, you guess and it's like, it's totally wrong. But you're like, I, you feel like you just should know everything already. So, so then you act like you know it and then, and then it's like, I don't know it. And then it's like, ah, I don't like this anymore. This isn't very fun. And then you just go through this whole thing or like Trent, I'm like, you have to go in order so that you can build, it builds on top of each other. You, once you learn this, then the next part, it, it, it 
that you take it in with the next part so then you could the next part can make sense and then you learn that and then the next part you can't go from lesson one and then skip to lesson 10 because you're not going to understand lesson 10 and so I was trying to explain that to him because then there's like fun games he can play and he just wanted to go play the games but then it's like he doesn't know how to the rules and how to play so I feel like with all of these things you're like I don't know how to not have bad thoughts I don't know how to uh, be in faith I don't know how to um, you know uh, tame my tongue I, I don't know how to do these things and it's like well of course you don't you have to learn you have to like practice these things you have to but you can't just skip over it either and you can't just I like, think that well, I know that it all starts with thankfulness. Oh, yeah. You're talking, like, at the beginning of the verse, let your request be made known with thanks, with thanksgiving. Yeah. Let your request be made known to God. Thankfulness is, is, like, the elementary thing that we never get away from. Yeah. When you don't know what to do, if, you, if you're thankful, you can't, be, you can't be out of the spirit and be thankful. You have to be spiritual you have to have your mind fixed on God and be thankful. You can't thank God for, you know, something that the devil did. You know, it's like, because then that's, it's, you're just, you're only, like, only being yeah. thankful. Then you're, you're, that's how you fix your mind on God. Um, Mrs. Moore, Jana Moore gave me a book for Trent. She said it's one of her favorite books. Someone had given it to her right before David was born. And it, it said, it's, the title is, It Could Always Be Worse. And she put in there, she says that, she said, I always, always, always find something to be grateful for because it could always be worse. Mm -hmm. And it really, it's, it really is true. Can we go back um, to the end of that? Like, so can you, yeah. The thing you have, things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, then, and God, the God of peace will be with you. So that's why we want to do these things is because then the peace of God will be with us. And so when I go back to the Trent, I'm not like, Trent, we just went over this yesterday. How do you not know that? You know, it's like you don't, I don't come down hard on him. He's in this learning process. And um, and then sometimes you forget and you're like, oh, yeah, I remember now. And and so th that's what we're doing right now is re reminding you, reminding us of who we are and um, uh, and of what to do. And if you've been coming to church on Sundays, um, we passed out because of Jesus I am scriptures and it's like, all laid out, and I've been saying those, and it, it come up to church and, and grab one. They're, they're around so you can have one, but um, that's just what we're doing is reminding you of how faithful God is and that um, that you're awesome and that as, you, as we stand on his word, then powerful things happen, and then also about in... Um, if, you, if you're like, Mark if Ford. you're watching from somewhere else, like, I don't know, and you're like, man... I want one of those. I, I can't get to church. Email, oh, yeah. like, I don't know. Email, like, go to the website and email whatever email address there is and be like, hey, can I get one of those because of Jesus PDFs? And we'll make sure to figure email out. it to Yeah. Them. If you're willing to, like, work for it and get, like, figure out where to, where to email, we'll figure out how to get it to you. So uh, just, yeah. Like, make sure, like, it's be, you know, aggressive about getting the word of God to yourself, yeah. you know, be it like, be like, I don't care if I sound like brazen or whatever. It's like, it's like be aggressive. Like when there's like resources that are going to help you build your relationship with God, like oh, yeah. be aggressive in getting those things. Yes, I definitely so. am. Like with all my, I have certain books that I go to all the time, but this because of Jesus, I'll just read a few. It's like, I am complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. And that's from Colossians, from Colossians 210. I'm not going to say all the references, but they're all from scriptures. Just I am alive with Christ. Just do them all. I am free from the law of sin and death. I am far from oppression and fear does not come near me. Ooh, I am born of God Ooh. and the evil one does not touch me. I am holy and without blame before him in love. Thank you. This is awesome. I have the mind of Christ. I have the peace of God that passes understanding. I have the greater one living in me. Greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. I have received the gift of righteousness and reign as a king in life by Jesus Christ. I have received the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Jesus in the eyes of my understanding being light. And that's a really good one to pray over yourself and your friends. 
and family. I have received the power of the Holy Spirit to lay hands on the sick and see them recover, to cast out demons, to speak with new tongues. I have put off the old man and have put on the new man, which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him who created me. I have given and it is given to me, it is given to me good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, poured in, uh, into my lap. I have no lack for my God supplies all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I can quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one with my shield of faith. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. <laughs> I shall do even greater works than, than Christ Jesus. I show forth the praises of God who has called me out of darkness and into his marvelous light. I am God's child, for I am born again of the incorruptible seed of the word of God, which lives and abides forever. And if you've had people not speaking life over you well, in like your whole life and you've had a terrible upbringing, now you can say, I am God's child, for I am born again of the incorruptible seed of the word of God, which lives and abides forever. I am God's workmanship created in Christ unto good works. I am a new creature in Christ. I am a spirit being alive to God. I am a believer, and the light of the gospel shines in my mind. I am a doer of the word and blessed in my actions. I am a joint heir with Christ. I am a conqueror through him who loves me. I am an overcomer by the blood of the lamb and the word of my testimony. I am a partaker of his divine nature. I am an ambassador for Christ. I am part of a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a purchased people. I am the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. I am not my own. I am the head and not the tail. I am above only and not beneath. I am the light of the world. I am his elect, full of mercy, kindness, humility, and long-suffering. I am forgiven of all my sins and washed in the blood. I am delivered from the power of darkness and translated into God's kingdom. I am redeemed from the curse of sin, sickness, and poverty. I am firmly rooted, built up, established in my faith, and overflowing with gratitude. I am called of God to be the voice of his praise. I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. I am raised up with Christ and seated in heavenly places. I am greatly loved by God. I am strengthened with all might according to his glorious power. I am submitted to God and the devil flees from me because I resist him in the name of Jesus. That's Woo. it. That's it. We're done. That's good. Um, the uh, if you can either just I rewind wanna... that over and over and over and just play that over and over. Yeah. Or there's another uh, Pastor Jeff. Oh, good. Uh, he he wrote he read all those on. He does a message every day. Um, you can just search. Do you know what it's Pastor under? Pastor Jeff Perry or something. It's it says because of Jesus on it's on YouTube, um, but you can oh, and probably Facebook. It's a, probably on Facebook. Too. Okay, yeah, look it up where it's uh, Pastor Jeff because of Jesus I am. And yeah, then he and says then it, and then you can um, say it. I would use that every single day. Yeah, or just, like, play it in your car, rewind. Have the kids refresh. listen to <laughs> it. Once the kids start getting this stuff in them, it, it's um, it'll change them. So, have yeah, that's so good. I, I knew he was going to do it. I just didn't know it was done already. So that's awesome. I'm going to look it up. But also I want to give you an opportunity to give because we never want to um, pass by an opportunity to sow seed in faith. And I know that people are believing God to get uh, pregnant, to, um, you know, have healthy, full-term, wonderful pregnancies, healthy babies, uh, households being paid off, people finding houses, cars, new jobs, um, current jobs that they have, just all these things. Um, let's let's sow towards, you know, breakthrough in all of our lives. And, um, and it, just, it just makes such a difference whenever we can sow in faith. So... Um, and also, if you weren't planning on coming to church this week, and I just want to encourage you to get in the building because it's going to be so good. Um, Friday night at 730, we have our Good Friday service. We're going to be having communion, and it's just a, an extra special time to dedicate your heart to God and to uh, forgive people and to just uh, move on from the past and, and press on to the future. And then on Saturday, we're having our egg hunt all day starting at 9 and goes to about noon, and um, look up on the website so you get the right time slots for your kids, and it's just, that's fun. We're going to have food and coffee and all sorts of stuff, and then uh, Sunday morning, we have 6.30 sunrise, 8 o'clock, 9.30, 11.15,
and they're all amazing. So just show up. It makes a difference when you when you show up. So I'm going to pray for you. God, we just thank you that as we read these scriptures that you do supply, that you are so faithful. I've just seen how your timing is so perfect and um, that, that we walk right in sync with you, God, and that we don't get ahead of ourselves. We don't lag behind, but we just walk right with you of what you want us to do. And we just thank you, God, for the rest of this day, the rest of this week, and that if people have been having a rough week, that it turns around right now in Jesus' name, and that this week ends up being such a wonderful, productive uh, week. And we come against sickness, getting on people's households, and we thank you for health and healing over people. I pray that they sense it right now, and in their wherever they're listening to this, that they know that healing is your will, God, and that we just receive from you all that you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen.